Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and Bible journaler here on YouTube. And this is a little bit of a catch up page that I was inspired to do during the season of Lent. And I had come across Proverbs 28 13. Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. And that one really hit home with me as I was going through Lent. And I was working on the, the whole thank you journal at the time. So I didn't get a chance to post this one. So I thought a little late is better than nothing. This technique is something you can use with any verse, of course. And it's really good to have some techniques like this in your pocket for when a verse really strikes you or God really says something to you and you just don't have an image. So that's why even in my book, I included some backgrounds, just a plain old background of some kind that's pretty and can give you time for meditation and a place to put the scripture without having to be like an image of something. And I didn't have an image that really worked with this in my mind. So I thought I would do a marble background. I'm using PH Martin's Hydrus watercolors. PH Martin's has a couple other lines of inks and things. I don't know how those react on Bible paper. I don't have any of those, but these Hydrus watercolors work great. They're really intense in color, but they also don't bleed through, which is a double nice thing because, you know, we like stuff that doesn't bleed. I'm doing this on my, or in my illustrated, um, yeah, not my illustrated, my interleaved Bible. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. And in that Bible, every other page is a blank one. You could also get some of that Tomoy, Tomo River paper, which is kind of like pretty much Bible paper, not exactly. And then trim one down, like do a background like this, trim it down to fit in your Bible and do a tip in with whatever verse you're using. You could also do this technique just making it a lot lighter colors and you can make it heavier on the outside column portion or something, but just do it across the whole page, but not with, you know, these really rich dark colors that would make it potentially unreadable. So there's that as well as an option. And what I'm doing is just putting some layers of darker color in streaks and I'm not making my streaks even they're not stripes. And if you look at any marble, you could Google some marble and see what it looks like. Sometimes they're in like Z shapes and V shapes and that sort of thing. And I'm not clustering all of the darks in one spot. I'm spreading them out to a couple of different places, that sort of thing. Letting it completely dry and then doing the ironing. I've had some people that said that they're, once they iron something, all the colors got really light and they were wondering if the heat was doing something to the watercolor. And what generally is happening is that you're sucking up all that paint that's still wet onto the piece of paper that you're putting over top of it. So when you iron it, it's just kind of pulling all that color off or at least pulling some of it off. If you wait till it's completely dry, then it's not gonna do anything. You're gonna be left with that intense color. And if you don't have any of those PH Martin's Hydrus watercolors, you could also do this by just layering a lot of watercolor and layer after layer will intensify that. And the other thing I wanted to try was this pit pen. It's a white pit pen by Faber-Castell. And a lot of people have said that's like the perfect white pen. It's really great. It's really awesome. And I did not find that to be the case. I got this pen as a gift at an art event that I went to. So I haven't I don't own any others other than this one and a gray one. So I don't have any knowledge of whether they have others that work better than this, or maybe I got a bum one and need to buy a different one, but I found it was really soft. If I went over it a second time after it dried, it got a little bit brighter, but I still like my white pen. Although I would like to have something really big that I can make a big word with because my white pen doesn't do that really well, but this works well enough, I guess, for for this, as long as I can go over the words a second time. It just doesn't make it like a really clean mark. It's, it's a whole lot of sketchy lettering, but I do sketchy lettering anyway, since I'm not a letterer. But here's the difference between that white and my white Uniball Signo pen. This one is really white white, and I think the ink in it is a little more like an acrylic. I've mentioned that before. 
And one of the things that I think causes people not to like this pen is that they try to press hard, especially if it doesn't write already. They're like, I'm going to push it really hard. But if you think about it, it's got a ball in the end. It's a ball point. And if you press really hard, you're pressing the ball against the paper and not allowing that ink or paint or whatever it is that's in there. You're not allowing it to flow around the surface of that ball so that it's not making it to the paper. You're just pushing the ball into the paper. So try not pressing so hard and also warm it up a little by writing on your finger or something beforehand. And that will often just kind of get it started, that sort of thing. For each one of these letters, I'm just putting a highlight on each of the top portions of the letter and down one side, just because I thought that would make it pop a little bit more. And that definitely made me happier and worked a little bit better. But uh, yeah, this is a really simple page to do and yet has a lot of impact. It's going to be a lot of powerful color that when I flip through this Bible, it's going to pop out at me because it's got bright color on it, even if it doesn't have imagery that pertains to the verse necessarily. So you can use this with all different kinds of verses in your Bible journaling. So thank you very much for joining me for this video today. It's a little short one, but I hope will be one that is helpful to you in your Bible journaling. Thank you so much. Click the like button because that always helps for YouTube to know to share my videos with other people who are interested in Bible journaling. And you can also go see us over in the Facebook group because there's ladies who share in that group. And I think there's a gent or two as well who share in that group all the time. So you can get lots of great inspiration from lots of wonderful people. Thank you. And I will see you again next week with another video. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Take care. Bye.